I'm glad you're here, and wow, I love singing. If that doesn't get, if that singing didn't get your heart in the place for ready for some preaching from Brother Dale, I don't know what will. Because that got me ready, and I'm not even, I gotta go first, and I'm ready, I'm just ready for him to go. I'm ready to be preached at. Um, I'm excited to be doing this. Before I forget, Pastor Darren wanted me to make sure I said this, and I've been trying all day to make sure I say this. On your way out, there will be a brown box. It says missions box on it. But if you put the money in there, please designate it for Brother Dale, and that's where we'll be putting the offering. Because with everything going on, we're not going to be doing the collecting plates. So please don't forget to do that. They will be a blessing. They already have been in the years that they've been coming. So please don't forget that part. They came up here on faith, and so we want to be that to support them in that. They have been doing a faithful ministry for years, and it's a blessing to see them every time. But now we're going to dive in. And we started this year with this idea for revival of who is God. And that's what we started this with. And that's where I'm going to be for this. But it's also tying in with what Pastor Darren was teaching on last Sunday with getting past the waves, getting past the breakers in life. Because when we said we were going to do who is God, a lot changed from that point to now in this world. But not just in the world, but in our lives individually. Where we were then is not where we are now. What a change has happened in the past few months since we said this is what we're going to do and how did God change that up on us all. And what a blessing thing that is to know that God can change things up and still give us peace. Amen. But sometimes when God changes things up, we kind of fall asleep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not into a sleep that's comfortable, into a sleep that you get almost annoyed that you're asleep. Because I don't know about you, but during that time of quarantine, I hated it. I wanted to be here, but because I wasn't here, I got lackadaisical because you don't have that accountability every week, right? Yes. When you come here, people are expecting you to be a Christian. When you're at your house with just your wife, I mean, if you slip up a few times, ah, it's just your wife or it's just your husband, it's just your kids, right? That's the excuse we give ourselves every once in a while, some more than others, right? We like to put excuses when we mess up. But God, there is no excuse before God that during this time, during this upcoming week, we're going to deal with who God is. And if you don't leave here change, it's not because of God. It's not because the word of God isn't going to be preached. It's simply for the fact that you don't want to wake up. It's simply for the fact that you desire to be how you are and you're happy like that. Now, these messages have been so hard for me to study. One, because usually I'm excited when I'm preparing a sermon for a revival. Like, I am like, full on, this is the right one. But this one, I had no idea until Sunday. And I've been working on it for like over like two months now. But when he started preaching on Sunday, I was like, okay, I'm doing right. This is the messages. It's, it's the right thing. Um, I got that peace from God saying, yep, that's the one. And oh, what a blessed assurance to get that peace. If we will open up in the Word of God to Romans chapter 13. And then if you want to put a thumb marker in Romans 8, and possibly we'll get to Ephesians chapter 5 as well. We're going to see. I got a clock. I got 15 to 20 minutes, so it'll be speed preaching. All right, so the Word of God says in Romans 13, verses 9 through 14, it says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, Thus shalt thou not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this time where we can come before you. Come into your throne room and beseech you, Lord, and beg of you to come and meet with us here tonight, to do a work in the hearts of every individual here. Lord, help me not to be a hindrance to the working that you have in store for tonight. Give me the words to say that it would be an encouragement and a help to every individual here tonight. We love you and we thank you for who you are and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
The first thing I want us to see, the first message of this revival meeting is it's time to awake. That it's time to be an awakened Christian. It's time to be a quickened Christian. A Christian that is arising from sleep. A Christian that has been stirred, that's been a little bit revived, that has a little bit of excitement about the things of God. Because it's time. If there's ever a time that Christians need to be happy about being Christians, it's now. You look around, people are not happy anymore. I mean, I wouldn't either wearing a mask all the time. I hate it. But we as Christians, we have something more than just having a covering on our face to make us happy. Right. I'll be wrapped up in toilet paper for the rest of my life because I can know that I can be happy in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing or what I'm doing. As long as I have the Lord Jesus Christ, I can be happy, right? There's no contradiction to God's happiness. If He wants you to be happy, if He's giving you the peace, then you can get through it all. That we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. But if we want to be an awakened Christian, because we know that God's an awakening God. We know that in 1 Timothy 6.13 it says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. And then in Romans 4.17 it says, And it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead. That we understand that God is a quickening God, that He seeks to make us revived. He seeks to stir our heart and to stir our soul into something more than who we are. That we are to be formed in the image of Christ in the first way that God wants to do that. He wants to awaken us to the love of God. He wants us to understand that He loves us, but He also wants us to understand that His love is particular. That it is not some vast thing of love that yes he does love every single individual on this earth but not in the way most people take it God's love is still pure it's still holy it's still just it's still judgment and it's still anger a father does not lose love for his children when he's angry at them there is just a point of which the son or daughter needs to see a reaction to what they did and God does that with anger just like we are to follow in that example that when someone does something, there is a holy anger that most of us don't have. <laughs> so don't use that as an excuse. <laughs> what we need to do before we can get to that holy anger and that holy wrath, you get to the holy love of God. Because yes. God's love is seeking to revive you. At all times, it's just there saying, hey, I'm here. Right. Hey, I still love you. Hey, you accepted me as your Savior to be the payment of your sin. Hey, I'm still in here and dwelling your heart. I haven't left and I never will. But how often do we forget that? I know I do, especially in that time of quarantine. I forgot that God's still watching. He knows when I'm being a jerk. But how many times did I still choose to be a jerk? A lot. How about you? How many times did you do something that if you knew God was watching, you wouldn't have done it? We forget that truth sometimes. Why? Because we forget that God loves us. Because it's easy to forget a God who's angry. It's easy to forget a God that's wrathful. It's easy to forget a God that's holy. But to forget a God that's love, purity, and holiness is a lot harder. Because you can't have one without the other. That all of God is all of God. You can't separate love from His holiness. You can't separate holiness from His love. They are entwined together. You can't separate it. It's an unbreakable bond, those two things, with God. And all his other attributes are in there too. Every attribute of God coincides with the other one. They're never uneven. They're never misguided. They're always perfect in every way. So if we are going to be awakened to the love of God, and we are going to be seeing the love of God in our lives, what are three things, three examples that should be evident in our lives from this text? The first is that true love, true biblical love, worketh no ill to his neighbor. Now that's hard. Because that's not very specific, is it? It just says, worketh no ill. That means any wrong thing, anything that might make someone sick, that might make them have a bad attitude, anything that is ill to your neighbor. You're not supposed to do that. How many times have we done something ill to someone we love? Now, how many times have we done that to people we don't know. How about that road rage you had coming up here, right? Or how about that person at work that did something stupid and you kind of lost your temper, right? That's working ill to your neighbor, because who's your neighbor? It's not the person that lives next door to you 
We'll see later this week that it's everybody. It's whoever is in need is your neighbor. That you're not supposed to wait for the person right next door to you to have an issue. Then be like, okay, I'm here to help you. And only be nice to the person right next to you. It's to everybody. We're not to work any ill to any person at any time for any reason under no circumstance. And that's pretty cut and dry. It says work no ill to our neighbor. And man, there are some people I'd like to work some ill to. If there are some people I could call down the fire of heaven on, man, Lord, I would do it. But we, we can't do that. Why? Because it's unbiblical. You can't do ill unto your neighbor, even if they irritate you. Even if, you know, you've had the perfect day. You got to sit on the lake, go fishing, do whatever you love to do most, and then someone shows up and just throws a wrench into it. You still can't do anything wrong to them. You can let them know you're frustrated, but in a godly way, with love, saying, hey, I know you threw that wrench and it hit me in the face. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't do that. <laughs> right? But that's what we're supposed to do. Even when someone says the wrong things and they mean it well. You got to understand, I am not good with words. I'm not. Ask my wife. I am terrible with words. I'll be trying to say the sweetest thing, and it'll come out so bad. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know. I can't even give an example, because it's just so bad. Like, I try so hard to be sweet, and it comes out, and it's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just not going to try anymore. I'm just going to buy you stuff. I'm not going to say anything anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, ooh. But our words have an impact on people. And they need to not be working any ill to our neighbor. And the second thing, if... We want the love of God to be awakened in our heart. And if it already is, it's going to be, we're going to wake up. Why? Because our salvation draweth nearer. That doesn't mean the moment you're getting saved is sooner. It's coming closer. It means, no, the moment the salvation occurs, the moment that you get to meet Jesus Christ in the air, the moment you die is getting closer with every breath you take. Every breath you take is a blessing from God. So what are you doing with the breath that God is giving you? That we need to wake up. Why? Because our salvation, the moment we get to go to heaven, is coming sooner than we ever anticipated. Today, there was two major accidents on 87 North. No one this morning ever thought that they were going to be in an accident on 87 North this morning. And just like that, Christians, we got to wake up. Because we have the promise of salvation. But there's people in this dying world going to hell in a candy basket. And we're just letting the candy basket go by. It's like, ooh, that looks nice. I, I like that. That's a good lollipop. But I, I don't want to do anything to help it. That's going to go there. It's not going to be treated good. It's, it's going to a miserable place, but we'll just let it go to the dump. It's a perfectly pe good piece of candy, but I'm just going to let it go to the dump. Now, in my eyes, that's travesty. No piece of candy should ever go to the dump uneaten, unless it's got peanut butter. Then that's good in the dump. I hate it. But when God sees a person... He doesn't see someone with peanut butter like we do. I don't see, I can see people and be like, yeah, I really don't want to be a Christian to them because I don't want them to go to be in heaven with me. I want to be away from them. But God's not like that, right? God wants the salvation of all men. That's why the Bible tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. Any single person in the entire world, the far left, the far right, they all need Jesus and they all have to bow before him one day. I'd rather be bowing willingly than have to because I'm being forced to. And I'm sure every other person, if they knew the truth of the Bible, would come to that choice. But we have to do our part. That if we are awakened to the love of God, we are not going to be working ill to people. We will be drawing nearer to the salvation, sharing the gospel to those in need. And then finally, if we're going to be awakened to the love of God... We're going to be wearing the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a weighty statement that is. That means everywhere you go, everything you do, is what Christ would do. That you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That you are wearing it when you wake up at 4 in the morning, 7 in the morning, 6.51 in the morning. No matter what time you wake up, the first thing you do isn't that cup of coffee. Though some of us need it. But it's making sure you got Jesus on you. Man, what a commitment that would make. Lord, I'm not going to get out of my bed until I know that I got you on me. That would change a lot of people's mornings, wouldn't it? You wouldn't be able to, I got up on the wrong side of the bed excuse anymore. It gets rid of excuses when you start walking with God. 
When you start putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, it changes the excuses because you have none. Because you've realized early in the beginning of your day that you have the Almighty God upon you and now you have no excuse to not do what He'd have you to do. Why? Because He is with you. He is leading you. He is guiding you. He is instructing you in the way. But it starts with putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the first thing, if we want to see the awakening power of God, is we need to awaken to the love of God. And secondly, we see we need to awaken to the leading of God. And for sake of time, I'm not going to read all of the scripture, but in Romans 8, 11 through 15, it's talking about the spirit dwelling in you and fighting the flesh. And in verse 14, it says, For as many are as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we need to awaken to the love of God. Why? Because he's allowing us to call him Abba, Father. He's your dad. He is your father. What a blessed thing that is. But we see that we also need to awaken to the leading to God. That yes, we need to know that God loves us and we need to be vigilant in sharing that, but we also need to know that God is leading us. That we need to awaken to the fact that every day God is going to lead us. But for that to be done well, for that to be done biblically, for that to be done in the way that gives God the honor, we have to realize that it starts with the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Because without the Spirit of God, you can do nothing good. You can do nothing that will actually help someone eternally. We could go out right now and say, God, get away from me, and go out and hand out 100 tracts. It's not going to do them a lick of good. Because unless the Holy Spirit of God is on that track that goes into somebody and somebody reads it and the Holy Spirit of God touches their heart, they ain't going to accept Christ. It's not about me. It's not about you sharing the gospel. It's about the Spirit of God being on us when we share the gospel. We want the love of God, but we need to have the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit for that to even happen. And then we see the ability of the Spirit. That inside of us, as carnal people, we have the flesh and the Spirit. When we got saved, the Spirit came. The flesh stayed. And every once in a while, that flesh comes up and fights the Spirit, doesn't it? But if we're focused on the love of God, knowing that we're not to work ill to the neighbor, knowing that our salvation draweth near, knowing that we're supposed to wear the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that we have the abiding presence of God, and knowing that the ability of our strength, the ability of anything we have, comes from the Spirit of God, man, that pretty much sets us up to conquer just about anything that can come at us. And if, that, if you need something a little bit more, how about the fact you're adopted into the family of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Something you don't deserve. In a billion years of doing good works and never sinning once, you're still going to mess up. And you're not worthy of what Christ has for us. I think Christians, we get a little comfortable with our salvation. Yeah, I said the prayer, so I'm good. No, you ain't. You're still a wretched sinner. You just got saved by grace. When God sees you, He sees grace, but He also sees the silly things you do at night. He sees the silly things you do during the day. He sees it all, and He has so much more for us. And we've been adopted into the family. And finally, in Ephesians, we see that we need to awaken to the light of God. That this light of God is through the Spirit of God. And in verse 13 of Ephesians 5, it says, But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So what do we see about this light of God? Because this light is from God, and later on in verse 14 it says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. That the giver of light in our life is Jesus Christ. And there's three things that we need to know about this light of God if we want to be awakened to it. First, that it will change you. That the light of God is not a light like that blinds in your eyes and then you just close your eyes. No. It's a light that goes into your heart in the deepest recesses and sees the darkest things you've ever done and says, hey, remember that? Yeah, you need to turn from that. Remember that sin that you're trying to hide from me? Yeah, my light penetrates down there and he sees it and he wants you to turn and repent from it. Why? Because he wants a relationship that's closer than anything you've ever experienced before. Because as a Christian, we're saved. But our relationship gets strained. And that's where the light of God is so important. Because it gets in there, and the light of God will change us. But it also cleanses us. It points out the facts that, oh, this is wrong. But it's like, hey, but I also have the solution. 
I have the answer, and it's in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's in getting back to Him, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ one more time for the rest of your life. Getting committed for the cause of Christ. And then finally we see, we need to cautiously walk in the light. And you say, why cautiously? Because... See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. And these are some evil times we're in. And there's a lot of things going on that Christians, we should not agree with. Now, we are not going to go out there and be riotous or in drunkenness or craziness because the Bible and the first scriptures I read, it said don't do that. What we need to do is focus on us. We cannot change the world, but we know the God that created the world and that can change the world. He can change the heart of every individual person that we talk to if the abiding Spirit of God is in us and we're walking according to His will. So we need to cautiously walk in the light. Why? Because as easy as it is to get in the light, it's just as easy to get out. It's a fine line. And it's a choice you guys have to make. All the right things can be said this week, but nothing will be done unless you make a decision. I've made decisions with these sermons. That's how I know they're the right ones. It's up to you guys to make the decision for yourself. I would love to force every single one of you to abide by the word of God, but it doesn't work that way. That's not love. That's working ill to my neighbor. The only thing that a preacher can do is share the word of God and say, I gave it my all. Here you go. Do with it what God is telling you to do. And this week, Brother Dale's going to preach some stuff. And it's going to hurt. It's going to convict you. And praise God it does. Thank God that you're not callous to that. But it's your responsibility to do something about it. All we can do is preach the word and then it's up to you guys. And that's all there is. This week is a week of decisions. Every night you'll have to make one. So the question is, what are you going to do? It's not up to me, it's not up to Brother Dale, it's not up to any of us. Just you. It's your choice. Now, Brother Dale and Miss Adelie, if you would 